Uh, good afternoon. We're here at the Cumberland Mine Railroad. This is our uh, number 3098 locomotive. And I wanted to show you the air compressor on it today. This is uh, actually a uh, two stage air compressor, it has three cylinders on it. And it uh, operating at uh, 900 RPM. The engine puts out about 254 cubic feet a minute. It's a, it's a water cooled air compressor. Um, and it has uh, about 10 and a half gallons of lube oil in it. But it's got some problems. So, don't very get, often get to see a compressor. This is an SD40 2 locomotive. Uh, show you here this is a this is our fire suppression system on the locomotive just happened to make this I got where uh, got a train came in he's dumping the those are loaded coal cars he's dumping them I made a video last week of uh, watching if you want to watch that of him dumping That's our number one locomotive. That was original here when U.S. Steel uh, opened the place in 1977. But uh, I said, this compressor's got some problems. Uh, let me show you up here. We got a uh, locomotive contractor out here fixing this. The uh, drive shaft to the air compressor actually broke. This is where it hooks into the engine. And there's a lot of stuff here that uh, got to get taken off. And you can see that drive shaft goes there and it goes up through there. I'm, there's not a whole lot of room to work in here. But uh, it's a real uh, pain. I'm glad I'm not the one doing it. So, anyway, while I'm here, I might as well show you something else. This is actually how you start the uh, locomotive. This is a this, this is called a lay shaft lever, and it uh, hooks down into the governor, which is off right now. So you would set that up. That sets your injector racks up on the engine. Set that up to about 1.5. Then uh, obviously I'm not going to start it for you, but you would uh, you're in your cab. Your isolation switch would have to be on start. Of course, the battery turned on. Run this over to the left here to fuel fuel prime, prime it for about 20 seconds or so. Then you flip it over here, engine start. That's how you start this uh, this engine. There is no way to start it in the cab. Got to come out here and do it. A lot of parts in here, so I'm not gonna walk. Gonna down through there to get in the cab to show you that switch but I did make a, a, a video quite some time ago on the locomotive controls for an SD40 you might want to watch that I show you the isolation switch and the battery switch and all that stuff but it's hot out here get in here a little bit of shade I want to tell you a little bit about this uh, locomotive here this was a uh, originally built for uh, Southern Pacific in May of 1966. You can look it up on the web, it's uh, Southern Pacific 8477. Then uh, after Southern Pacific and Union Pacific uh, merged, they uh, was actually sold to uh, Boise, it got retired, the locomotive got retired at that merger, then it was sold to Boise Locomotive Works where they remade it into an SD40-2. This was an original SD40. And from there it was leased by, uh, well they rebuilt it to uh, GCFX3098. And that was leased by Alstom and uh, to CSX for a while. And then it was leased by SIT Group to Canadian Pacific where it was uh, reporting mark with CITX. We actually got the locomotive here at uh, Cumberland. We bought it out of Chicago, a broker, um, on September 13th of 
2013. So you can look up MVPX. You might not be able to find MVPX on the uh, thing, but you will find a lot of the uh, CITX pictures on the web of this. Um, so that's interesting. The livery on it when he came here was called the uh, White Ghost. Up here's our, our radiators. And then there's cooling fans up above them on top. And uh, this over here, that's the dynamic brake grids. That's what dissipates the heat for the dynamic brakes. So I got the, most of you guys probably never saw. It's a pretty big compressor. I, I don't know what size the pistons are, I really don't know. But uh, anyway, thought I'd show you that today while this thing's apart. I hope you have a good day and thanks for watching.